Hi Floss Tube, it is Marissa, also known here and on Instagram as the Crafty Heifer. I am back today with a, another Floss Tube video for you. Um, I missed last week. And honestly, I may go to a bi weekly floss tube just because I don't stitch that fast. I'm still pretty slow, but I will let you know how that goes. So, for today, you're getting a floss tube. Uh, so, we had some diamond painting activities that happened over the weekend. Um, we did our diamond paint a thon and we did this one for a cause. And so, we raised a lot of money for different causes. Um, I'm very proud of my diamond painting community and how they responded and participated. Um, so that'll be a separate video, but I wanted to let you guys know that off the top of the head or the top of the video, whatever you want to say. Um, I do have my diamond painting back here. As you can see, this is Shepherd's Cottage by Diamond Art Club. Um, and the artist on that is Mandy Manzano. So that's what you're seeing back here. <laughs> I did do that small square there um, over the weekend. So, but let's talk about cross stitch because that's why you're here, right? So this week, uh, or these last couple weeks, I did get some things done on several of my whips. Um, I did not touch um, letters from Hogwarts at all. Uh, I was waiting on my glow in the dark floss to come in to fill in the windows of my castle. I did finally get that. I finally got my order from 123 Stitch, which I will tell you more about in the haul part of the video. But uh, let's start with the Feels Like Home Cell. So when I showed you guys this last time, I had finished the house, but none of my windows had been filled in. So as you can see, I have filled in all of my windows. I've gotten some of my words done. I'm just got to do the E here and then I'll be able to start the fence and the flowers. Um, this sal is from Fat Quarter Shop and I will put in like all of my specifics, the fabric and everything like that. But this is where I've gotten. So I'm about three quarters of the way done with this. I'm going to try to get this E finished tonight and go ahead and start on my fence. But this is for a gift. I have to have it ready by next weekend. So this is going to be pretty much my exclusive pattern to work on to make sure that I get that finished in time. And uh, that way I can do a full, fully finished and have that ready as a gift. So feels like home by Fat Quarter Shop. I was very proud of my progress there on that one. Um, next up, I don't have anywhere to put these. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> next up, I did some work on my Linen and Threads 2020 Friends and Family Mystery Sal. And if that's not a mouthful, I don't know what it is. So let me work it out. I didn't do a whole lot on here. I spent a couple of hours on it. Um, if you remember, I had the pot done and then part of this stem. So I went ahead and started putting in my leaves or flowers or whatever you want to call those. So a little bit of progress there. This is still February. So I'm very far behind on this one. This is one that I'm going to come back to. I really enjoy the slow pace of this one. I can just kind of work at my own pace. Um, and I like that they leave theirs up so you can like go back on their website. If you go to the linens and threads or the linen and threads, um, dot com, I think is what it is. If you go to their website, you can get these, uh, stitch alongs from the past couple of years. So I appreciate that. So even if I don't finish this in 2020, I'm not concerned about it. I'm enjoying this pattern. I really love the Quaker style. I love the way that it looks when it's finished. And so I'm just going to keep enjoying this at my own pace. There will probably be a time when I work on it exclusively, get all caught up and things like that. But for right now, I'm just happy with making progress. So I'm going to try to get this finished and then I will start on the next set of elements, which will probably be, I'll probably go down to the bottom because March and June are down here across the bottom. So I'll probably continue to go down and work on that set of uh, medallions next. Um, I think, and then come back up because I'm really intimidated. There's a piece for May and it's a huge, um, pot with, you know, a big floral motif. And so I'm kind of intimidated by that. So I'm probably going to put that off as long as possible. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> All right. So that was that one. Um, I also did some work on the, 
Lone Star Stitchers pattern. This is a Texas Retreat exclusive pattern by um, Twin Peak Primitives. And so I've been working on this one off and on. This is my first linen piece. Now that I've kind of gotten used to the linen, I really enjoy working on it. I wasn't sure I wanted to start it beforehand um, to work on linen how I would like it, but I've actually really enjoyed this. So this is where I've gotten, I filled in, I finished filling in the flag and I finished the words here and the words here. Now what I'm thinking, because it's very hard to see those words in this cream color, I may pull this these words out and go back and do them in either the blue or the red just to make them pop more. I know one of the ladies in the group um, went ahead, she outlined her letters, but I think I may end up pulling those out. We'll see when I get done. I did get some more of the um, border done here, so I added a couple flowers in, so I've just got to finish that around. So I don't have too much more left on this. Uh, there's a blue element here as well but I'm gonna keep working on that. Again, this is for me, so it's very casual. I did find a finishing piece that I'm gonna put this on uh, this last week, and so I was excited about that, so I have something to finish it with as soon as I'm done with it. Um, let's talk about new starts. I am running through this, you guys, because I have to go to work. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is gonna be quick, fast, and in a hurry. Um, I did get started. I put this in my new, my first really project bag here uh, that Miss Gina made for me. And it is the Star Spangled Banner that I purchased from Etsy. And again, all of the details will be there. So it is this one here. Now, I decided I'm only doing the words. I'm not going to do this bottom battle scene here. Um, I'm just going to do the words. So I did go ahead and make a start on this. I figure I can work on this in July along with all of my Christmas patterns because, you know, July is like a patriotic month and all the things. So this is the start of that O, that big fancy O there. I have it put in, I've put in maybe two hours on this, if that. I don't even think it's been that long. Um, I did remember to go ahead and section off where my starting point was. And my top border, aren't you proud? Because you know I mess that up a lot. So now I know where to start, <laughs> where to work from. Um, and I'm just going to continue to work. So doing finishing the O, which I'll probably try to finish sometime this week, and then start on the actual words. I think once I get going on the words, it probably won't take as long. This is in an 11 by 11 Q-snap that I got off of a stash unloading group. I'm not sure I'm a fan of the 11 by 11 just because I do I'm a front back stitcher um, with one hand and so on this when I'm doing that it's kind of it's more of that motion from front to back than I really like so I may take this and combine this with the 8 by 8 that I have feels like home on and make them 8 by 11s like my other ones are I really I really really like that size that seems to be my like niche point um, but I haven't made that decision yet because I wanted more of this to be available so I didn't have to move the Q-snap so much. So, I haven't quite made up my mind about it yet, but we'll go from there. Okay, so that was everything that I stitched on this last couple of weeks. I did get, um, and some of you will remember me showing you this. This is the... Uh, bed and Breakfast for Spooky Hollow uh, by Little Stitch Girl. And you'll have to excuse my notes in there. So this is part one, and I believe this is going to be a 9 or a 12 part series um, by Little Stitch Girl. And I got the fabric for that. I went ahead and got my flosses for that. They're in a bendy flip by Bags Plus. It's very cute. Um... I went ahead and pulled out the flosses for that because I got those with the one, two, three stitch order as well. Wasn't sure if you guys wanted to see me haul flosses or not. So I went ahead and kitted that one up, but you got to see them anyway. So that will be something that I will be starting um, as well. Now I did some, a couple weeks back, you guys remember I showed you the shaving cream dyeing that I did. Well, this past weekend, 
I went ahead and did some coffee tea dyeing. And really it was just tea dyeing. I didn't use any coffee. Um, now, I don't have, I watched all the videos, right? And I watched Priscilla and Chelsea and I watched um, several other coffee tea dyeing videos. I don't have a stock pot at all. So the biggest pot I have is just like a regular, you know, saucepan type pot. So I do, however, have a six quart crock pot. And since I'm putting food in it, I wasn't worried about it. Uh, so I got out my big six quart crock pot and that's harder to say than it should be. Um, and put hot water in there. I put my tea bags in, let them kind of steep for a little bit. And then I put my fabric in. So I did two pieces of fabric. So the, First piece of fabric I'm going to show you, and it does have all of the little things hanging off of it and everything like that, but you guys, I bought an iron. I know, I was adulting real hard this weekend. Um, I haven't owned an iron in many, many years because I don't buy clothes that have to be ironed, and so I had to buy an iron so that you guys wouldn't have to keep seeing my messy uh, stuff. So, this is a piece of 22 count hard anger from Joann's. It's just the Joann's brand. I really like this. It did get a little, little bit of some modeling in it um, where that part of the fabric was at the top of the crock pot. So that's one side. So you can see just little bits. It's very subtle, which I actually really appreciate. But I am super happy with the color. I used, um, I got a set of like, it was like 100 tea bags at Family Dollar and I think it was like one or two dollars. Um, I'm not using my good tea. I'm not using Lipton to tea dye this stuff. Sorry, I'm using the cheap stuff. Um, but I'm very happy with the way this turned out. Now, I put this in the crock pot. I turned the crock pot on low. And I let it soak for about two hours. I took it out, dried it outside. And then put it back in for another two hours. And then let it dry again. And so, this is the color that I got. Um, these are going to be for the, a lot of the Christmas patterns that I'll be working on for Jolly July, and I am absolutely happy. So happy with this. Um, my next purchase will probably be a sewing machine um, so that I can do the serging of the edges. Now, the other piece of fabric that I used for this is a piece of Joann's uh, linen. And it's a 28 count, I believe, linen. No, it was a 32 count linen. It's 32 count. It was white when I started it. It also got coffee and tea dyed. And I think it turned out really, really nice. It's not quite as dark as I wanted it to be. And the linen picked up a little bit more. I don't think it's coming out on camera so much, but you can see that splotch right there. That was where one of the tea bags was actually laying on the linen in the crock pot. This one was done in the crock pot as well. Um, and you know what, you guys, I told you wrong. This is the piece I did for two hours, dried, and put back in. The Ada was put in overnight. Um, I put it in about 8 o'clock and took it out about 10 o'clock the next morning. So I just left it overnight, but I turned the crock pot off. So the Ada was cold dyed and the linen was hot dyed in hot water. So I do like the way this turned out. I think it's a great color. It does show a little bit more of a reddish tint from the tea bags than the Ada does, but I am very happy with both pieces of fabric. And both of those are going to be fabric that I use for my Christmas patterns for Jolly July. So I wanted them all on this coffee color, caramel. I don't know what, what color we wanna call this. Tan. I don't wanna call it tan. But anyway, so those are ready to go. All I've gotta do is um, measure and cut my fabric so I can go ahead and finish kitting up all of my Christmas projects for Jolly July and you know what we'll do is next week I will go ahead and get those all done and then we'll go through my plans for Jolly July. I think you guys will appreciate that so you'll see what patterns I'm going to be working on or going to attempt to work on and we'll go from there. So the next thing we have is haul. Now, there's quite a bit. We are coming to the end of all of the stuff that I've bought. I'm purchasing a few things here and there. But for the most part, my bulk purchasing is done. So, um, I did get from one of the stash and loads, and I cannot remember which one. 
but she had a bunch of fabric on sale. So this is an Ada 14 count and it's 18 inches by 30 inches. That's a good chunk, a good sized. And so this one will be dyed. I'm not, I have no idea what I'm going to dye it yet. I don't know what project it's going with, but I got these specifically to be able to dye them. So one of them is probably going to be ice dyed and one of them will probably be immersion dyed, but I got that piece. And then that same seller also had another eight of 14 count. This one is 33 by 29. So that one is also a very large piece, which I appreciated. I don't mind cutting my Ada to get to the size that I need and dyeing it that way. Um, but I felt like that was two really good sizes. Um, and she sold them. I think one was, I want to say one was six, one was nine or something like that. So they were very affordable for the size that they were. I also finally got um, my fabric from 123 Stitch. So you guys, I put that 123 Stitch order in May the 7th and I finally got it last week. And I should tell you today is the it's Tuesday the 24th, 23rd. I don't know what day it is. Sorry. Um, no, it's when is it Wednesday? It's Wednesday. Sorry, it's Wednesday. <laughs> I really don't know what day it is. Uh, I was down yesterday. I went to work Monday. Everything was fine. I got up, I woke up yesterday morning and I had a migraine. And so I'm still migraine hungover right now. Um, those of you that get them, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, so I really don't know what day it is. I just know that I have to go to work here in a minute and do all the things that I should have done yesterday. So, I finally got this fabric. Now, I love this more than I thought I would. This was the whole reason for my one, two, three stitch order. And because it was at the beginning of May, everybody was kind of running out of fabric. You know, a lot of the, the brands that we go to, like Picture This Plus, you weren't able to get the colors that you wanted and different things like that. So, this is 32 count Vintage Stormy Night Lugana. And it is 27 by 36. And I bought this fabric specifically to put a Spooky Hollow on. So I love how it turned out. It is gorgeous. It is exactly what I wanted. It's showing up a little bit more green on camera. It is definitely, it is gray. It is a very nice gray color. Um, a very neutral gray color and I wanted something I didn't want white and I didn't want a super dark color because there's so many dark colors in the pattern and so everything in all of the patterns she's released should pop off of this fabric now I'm gonna do mine in um, she does have some I should say her name is Jordan little stitch girl Jordan she has uh, two different frames that are available as freebies for this pattern for this village basically on her website and I'll put that in the description box below um, and so I haven't decided exactly which one I'm gonna do but if you decide to do a different layout than the two that she has available it honestly looked like her pattern for the border would be easy enough to like reconfigure if that's what you wanted to do it doesn't look it's not really complicated or intricate or anything like that um, so you should be able to adapt it to however you lay yours out. I don't think I'll probably do every single piece. Um, I think they're supposed to be, like I said, 9 or 12. I'm probably not going to do every single one, but I'm going to do most of them. So I got my fabric. I'm super excited so I can actually start that now. The next piece that I got um, was from uh, Stash Unload on Facebook. And I don't know exactly what, I think, I don't know exactly why I purchased this, but I just really liked it. I thought it would probably be good for a Halloween pattern. It's just, it's different. I really like it. It kind of looks like, it reminds, well I should say, it reminds me of Through the Stones by whatever company does Through the Stones. I cannot remember off the top of my head, you guys. But I just really liked that fabric. I thought it would be good for a Halloween piece and it's different. It's very green. It's a very gray green as opposed to the other one, which is very just gray. Um, it's a little more green than I thought it would be. It's almost an olive color in some lights, but 
I really liked that. I'm going to use it. I will find something to put on it. Uh, so yeah, I got that. It is a 28 count Jobelin. It's called Lazy River. And yeah, so I don't have a specific project in mind, but I thought that was a good buy. So I went ahead and purchased that. All right, what do we want to go to next? So next up, I got some more needle minders because I realized I was kidding up all my projects. And my needle minders, because I use a lot of them as cover minders, they're kind of everywhere. I know I have plenty, but I couldn't find them. And so each of my projects gets its own cover minder, like our needle minder, like most of you do. Well, I went ahead and wanted some more that were kind of fun. And so I got on Etsy and I found some um, that are from a podcast that I listen to called My Favorite Murder. It's a very popular podcast. There's chances that a lot of you are probably murderinos, which is what the fans of that podcast are called. So these four came from Hermit Designs Jewelry, and these came off of Etsy that you can see there. Excuse my nails. They're not clean. I need to wash my hands. Um, and as you can see, I have not opened these yet, but I got four, and these were the two and a half inch, I believe. So... If you get offended by any of these, I apologize, but this is the podcast that I enjoy listening to. And these are some of the quotes that they say in the podcast. So this one says, pepper spray first, apologize later. And you can see it's got a very tiny but very powerful magnet on the back. This next one says, this is terrible, keep going, which is one of my favorite quotes that they say. And then the last one is Murderino on a blood spatter. So those all came from Hermit Designs Jewelry. And then I got a couple of separate ones or one separate one. How many do I have? I just have one separate one. And this is from Jen Pins It All. She's on Etsy, Instagram, and Facebook. And it says, stay sexy and don't get murdered, which is kind of their little catchphrase. So, and that one is much smaller than the other. So, this one will be good for um, some smaller patterns. So, maybe some of my Christmas patterns or something like that. And these were not expensive, you guys. I think these big ones were like $2 a piece. And this little one, I think, was like $1.25 or something. So, I got those just for funsies. And I'm very happy with them. So, those will get put in projects. So, you'll probably see those on future projects. And then, oh, we have more fabric. I forgot we had more fabric. Um, I found a piece of, uh, my girl Mayhem was looking for some ice blue fabric that she could do Snow Village on. So this is a piece of blue, ice blue Belfast 32 count linen. And I can't remember how big it is, but it's very large. I'm not even going to unfold all of it. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous ice blue color. It reminded me of glaciers, that really pretty blue that you get in glaciers. Um, and it is a, as you can see, a very large piece of fabric. So she's going to get this in the mail. I need to get this in the mail this week. And so uh, I got that for her. And then I got myself a piece of... Twenty-eight count cashel linen, and I got this for ten dollars. It's called Periwinkle Puffs, and it's from the Blended Needle Company. If this bag is correct, um, but it's just a really neutral gray color. And you guys, I think. So here's the thing. I, I get a lot of grays. I'm really attracted to the grays over the like tans or the other brown colored neutrals. I really like the grays because I think that uh, you can get more out of it. Now this is a gray purple and then it's got little pops of almost cream color in it. And 
and I have I already know what I'm putting on this fabric but yeah I really liked it it's interesting it's different I just really liked the, the fabric so it's not something I probably would have bought just because but I, I have a pattern and I was like that would be perfect for that particular pattern so that is the last of the fabric we are down to patterns I'll get everything back up in a minute okay so I got a couple of freebie patterns uh, that were sent with some of the fabric so this is one that Karen sent that she bought or that she sent with some of the fabric that I purchased so and it's a kit so it's got everything in there and then I know there's another one here somewhere anyway um, I also got this one it is a waxing moon designs it's called a sparkly Christmas and it says Christmas is too sparkly said no one ever and this is one of my favorite things my best friend says this at Christmas um, she loves this so this is going to be probably a Christmas gift for her um, I'm not gonna do it on this pinky I think I'm gonna do this on red red and this is on a 28 count discord crystal cashel from picture this plus um, it's for 14 count and it's 103 by 99 so I got that one off the sash unload this one also came from sash unload or these two and I can't remember if I showed these to you guys or not so if you've already seen these I apologize I honestly couldn't remember um, this one is from Country Cottage Needlework. It's called Santa's List, and this is what it looks like. So that'll be one of my Christmas patterns that I work on. This is for a 32 count beautiful beige linen courtesy of Weichelt, 71 by 136. So I will be doing that one on a tan. And then this one is Country Cottage Needleworks as well. It is called Snow Sampler. Hold on just a second. Let me get my invoice out of the way so I can see the details. This one was done on a 32 count raw silver linen courtesy of Yarn Tree and it's 82 by 125. So that's another one that I'll be working on for Christmas. And those both came from Dawn on Stash Unload. So I'll be getting those kitted up with some of the fabric that I dyed. <clears throat> Let me take a drink. Um, slowed down. Ooh, can't believe we're already at 30 minutes. Okay. Um, this one is a Lizzie Kate. It's called Socks and Underwear. It's from the Santa 2010 collection. And it says, when you stop believing, you get socks and underwear. And this is kind of a running joke in our family. All right, guys, sorry about that. My pest control guy came because I've got a wasp nest on my back patio. So he came and got that knocked down and apparently they are very unhappy. So. Uh, what was I saying? Okay, this next one came from, it's a Lizzie Kate socks and underwear. Uh, this is kind of a running joke in our house because we all get socks and underwear for Christmas. And so I just thought that one was really cute. So I got it. It is done on a 28 count khaki Lugana using classic Colorworks threads there and then this one I've been kind of hunting a little bit this one is a Lizzie Kate and it's called Yankee Doodle so you can see it's got the three different patterns in it they're all patriotic and these were done on a Yankee Doodle Dandy was stitched two was stitched over two on 28 count undyed linen using two ply over dyed sampler threads and it's 99 by 71 uh, the pop model was stitched one over one 
let me try this again over one on 16 count cambrai heatherfield using two ply over dyed sampler threads and it's 49 by 102 and the made in usa model was stitched over two on 28 count lambs wool linen with two ply thread and it is 48 by 110 so I don't believe there's certain months that you get to be patriotic, so I can do these at any time. Now, obviously, these are very July 4th oriented with the fireworks and things, but I definitely want to do the pop one. I'll probably end up doing all three of them, to be honest with you. But, yeah, I got that one, so I have that one in my arsenal as well. Um, and then... This was another freebie that was sent with my fabric. I'm definitely going to do that one. It's super cute. That's Happy Jack and it is by uh, designed by Pam Kellogg and I believe it's for Krynik. It looks like she printed this off of Krynik.com and it is done in fine braid Krynik and it's on a 16 count light tan Ada stitched over two. And then the other one is the Bountiful Harvest bookmark, which I can't show you because it's the actual pattern, but it is also from Krynik. So don't forget, those of you that are new to stitching, one of my favorite things is to go to all of these um, different designers' pages. You know, DMC's got free patterns. Pretty much all of them will have at least one or two freebies available. So if you get into a place where you have a lot of thread, but you don't necessarily have the money to buy a pattern or different things like that, check out some of these freebies. Some of these freebies are great. I know Long Dog Samplers, I did get that one. It's going to be in here. Um, that's an amazing freebie, honestly, because, you know, those Long Dog Samplers are very intricate. They're very involved and they're absolutely gorgeous. And, um, you know, if I could get one for free, great. I'm not brave enough at all. Like you guys, I'm not, I'm so not brave enough to actually start this one anytime soon. Like I don't feel like I have the wherewithal to stick with it. I don't feel like I have the stitching ability to do it. Like it's very overwhelming. So this is the one I'm talking about. This is pandemic. You're going to see this probably all week long this week. Um, and this is the one I'm talking about. It is very intimidating for me as a new stitcher and I still consider myself a new stitcher to even look at that and try to break that down. This pattern, just FYI, two-sided printing. This pattern is, I printed on two sides anyway, is 20 pages long, just the pattern. So yes, happy stitching if you're starting it or have already started, I've seen it on Instagram. Some people have already started this, so more power to you, but my goodness. I printed it. I made sure I had it. Whew. Woosa, you guys. <laughs> okay, so the next one I got has been on my wish list for quite some time. Um, I absolutely love this. This is, if you want to call it that, Wednesday Adams is my Patronus, okay? Um, so this is by the Witchy Stitcher on Instagram. She's got her own website as well, or not on Instagram, on uh, Etsy. I bought this off Etsy. And it's the I'm Not Perky cross stitch pattern. Now the pattern is not the frame and everything. It's just this part here. And I think this one was $6. It wasn't bad at all. Um, but this one was one of the first ones to go on my wish list when I started looking on Etsy for cross stitch patterns. And I know the Witchy Stitcher has some great patterns. I have her um, isolation bat as well to do. So what I'm thinking about doing, let me tell you about why I'm doing all of these Halloween patterns. So those of you that know me know obviously I support St. Jude. Um, I am on the committee here in the Dallas area for the St. Jude walk run. And basically what that means in real life is while I'm doing all of that stuff, the walk happens in September. So crafting wise, I basically lose the whole month of September because I'm focused on St. Jude then. So I have to basically plan everything ahead. So Jolly July, we all know Jolly July. I'm gonna be participating in that to try to get my Christmas patterns started if not finished. I'm hoping to get several finishes on Christmas things so that I'm not stressing about that in October and November. 
and I can enjoy those two months because that's my favorite time of the year. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups now. Um, so when I was talking with a friend of mine, I was talking with Creative Mayhem, and we were trying to figure out what to do in August. And so I'm going to do all Ghost August. And that's going to be when I work on all of my Halloween patterns. So I'm going to be doing Not Perky. I'm going to be doing Spooky Hollow if I haven't already started it, which I think I'll probably start it anyway. But I'm definitely going to be working on this one. I'll definitely be working on Spooky Hollow. I have a couple of other Halloween patterns. Um, several of them were freebies. But I'm going to be working on those. So I'm going to do All Ghost, and that's A-L-L-G-H-O-S-T, All Ghost August. It was really hard to find something that rhymed with August. Um, so if you want to join me for that, that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, this next one is also going to be worked on in August. I found this one. Now, this creator reached out to me. She left a comment on my couple of my videos back. And she's another Marissa. So we don't, there's not very many of us, you guys. Like, Marissa is not a name you hear all the time. So it's always exciting to meet another Marissa. Now, she's in Maine. Um, and she does have a floss tube and her name is, uh, M Kissa or yeah, it's M Kissa something. I'll put it down here. Um, but M Kissa creations, there it is. It's on her pattern. Um, I happened to stumble across this one when I was just searching Halloween patterns. I didn't even know she was a pattern designer and I found this one and practical magic is my favorite Halloween movie. I love Hocus Pocus, but Practical Magic is my favorite. So I found this and I absolutely had to have it. That uh, lavender gray fabric that I was showing you guys, it's this is what's going on it. So this is called Things I Know for Certain. Oh, it helps if I actually show you the picture. And so those of you that have seen Practical Magic, this is the final scene of the movie where they are on the roof. And they float down with their umbrellas and their magic. And it is 185 by 199 stitches. She gives you several stitch counts. So she gives you a 14 count, a 16 count, and an 18 count. And how big the pattern will be. Which I really like. It's by Marissa Nichols for M. Kissa Creations. And I believe in one of her videos she said that her that's what her nickname was growing up. Her dad called her M. Kissa. Um, so it says... Always throw spilled salt over your left shoulder. Keep rosemary by your garden gate. Plant lavender for luck and fall in love whenever you can. So yeah, I love this pattern. I'm so doing this and it's going to be gorgeous. I'm so excited. Now this black, I'm not going to lie to you. I already know this is going to take forever, forever and ever, but I'm doing it. So I found that I absolutely love that pattern and this is another big pattern but she does give you um, a layout for it which I really like so she tells you what order that the pages will go in I don't want to hold that too close um, because it does show some of the pattern I really appreciate that it's only got one two three four five six colors in it now, obviously, the, the biggest color, she used DMC 3799, which is a pewter gray instead of black. Obviously, you could use whatever you wanted on that. Um, it calls for a light pewter, a snow white, a pistachio green, a lavender dark, and a rose ultraviolet, very dark. So, I may play around with some of those colors, but I may not. I have not decided yet, but that will be another All Ghost August. And then talking about free patterns, I went on and I had a couple of these um, earmarked to go ahead and print out. So I went ahead and did that. This one is a hands-on design and it's called Scary Apothecary. Um, and it's 2009 by Kathy Haberman of Hands-On Design. Um, it is not for resale. It should be a freebie. But it's this one here. If this is not a freebie, somebody let me know. I should probably hold it back here. So it is a potion thing with the steam coming out, sitting on a couple of books. So I really liked it. And this one is Best Witch. Let me try that again. Best Witches. And it is from Waxing Moon Designs. This one is a freebie I printed off of their page. And it looks like this. So I thought that was really cute. So those are a couple more 
that I found for August, August. So if you would like to join me for that, I would love to have you. Um, I think that's everything. Um, if you guys saw last week, I bought a new diamond painting. Um, let me say this. Let me stop. Pause. Pause. Uh, this is the portion of the program where I'm just going to babble. So if you're not interested in that, thank you for joining us today and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy stitching. For those of you that are going to stick around, let's, let's do just a little bit of chit chat, not too much. So I um, bought a new diamond painting last week. It is the 10th Doctor. That video is posted. It was posted on Thursday night. <sighs> if you haven't seen that video, you guys, that was the one. That was the one I've been waiting for. The entire time I've been diamond painting, that was the one I wanted. I made room in the budget to get that painting because I was not planned for because I didn't know it was coming out. So I completely made room in the budget for it. I'm so excited about it. Now, I had literally kitted this up three days before I saw that one. So we're going to be working on this one first. I've had this one for over a year. And it is completely gorgeous. It will look like, in fact, I've got the box sitting here. So we're going to talk about diamond painting for a minute. That is what it will look like when it's done. This is my very first Mandy Manzano that I ever picked up. So I figured it's probably time to work on it. Um, my YouTube friend, uh, Rebecca, uh, at Crafting Journey with Rebecca decided that she was going to do this as a kind of whip along, if you want. So she started hers. She's like, if you have this in your stash, you want to work on it, let's do it together. So I went ahead and pulled it out and I started working on it. I'm really loving the colors. This section pretty much was all during dp this last weekend. So all down there at the bottom. I do love the colors. The colors are gorgeous. Um, so I've got this one. I'm going to just casually go through so that I don't burn myself out on diamond painting again. If I feel like doing it, I'm going to do it. If I don't feel like doing it, I'm not going to force myself because this is for me. Um, so it's not like there's any rush or anything. And sometimes I want to do something that's not cross stitching still. So this will be a good alternative. I can come, I can sit, listen to a book, watch YouTube, whatever. And I can work on this, you know, for an hour or two at a time and call it good. So, that's what we're going to do there. Um, I did get my house cleaned this weekend. I did laundry. I dusted. I did all of the adulting things while dp was going on. Um, I did nip out a couple of times to go take care of a few things that I needed to take care of. Um, which I told everybody I was going to be doing ahead of time. But for those of you that don't know, dp is where we pick a weekend. We do them usually quarterly, um, not quite quarterly this year, but uh, we pick a weekend and I have my wonderful friends from YouTube all sign up and we do a marathon and it's literally an hour and a half per creator and then you change channels and you go find somebody new and they go and it's just basically from Saturday morning to Sunday night we go we like to have it a nice continuous stream this time we didn't quite fill all of the spots all the overnight spots and things but that's okay because I didn't realize when I picked this weekend that it was Father's Day weekend oops <laughs> so I completely understand um, our next DP a thon will be our spook a thon our second annual spook a thon which will happen um, in October probably over Halloween weekend I'll talk with the girls and the guys and see what weekend if they want to do it the weekend before or the weekend of um since halloween is on a saturday this year we'll see how that goes but spookathon will be in october so that'll be the next one um i'm trying to think if there's anything else i don't think so i'll be doing a live tonight um at seven central time on my channel here if you would like to come and join us uh we just have a good time it's only an hour we go on, we have a good time, we chit chat. I'll probably diamond paint, honestly, just because this is like all up in my space um, on the easel. <laughs> I'm probably just gonna leave it there and diamond paint. Either way, you guys, I think this is probably it for this video. I'm gonna finish this cup of coffee, go ahead and change clothes so that I can go to work um, and get some stuff done up there. Thank you so much for joining me back here and watching. If you liked what you saw, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button down below or to the side or wherever it happens to be on your screen. If you like this video and you are not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, please don't forget to hit that cowbell because everybody needs more cowbell in their lives. And then you'll hopefully, hopefully, 
uh, will get your notifications because you know YouTube has been not well not doing well with the notifications I'm getting them like three hours later anyway go ahead and attempt it hit the cowbell <laughs> um, I'm on Instagram feel free to follow me if your account is open and unlocked I will follow you back and I think that is it oh I know I, I do have one more announcement one more announcement if you're still here I have a spot available for the retreat the diamond painting retreat that is happening in October here in Texas that I'm hosting um, it is called the Lone Star Retreat and I do have one spot available if you are interested in the details please get a hold of me um, on Facebook my name over on Facebook is Marissa McCartney I mean that's McCartney like Paul um, and we will get you know get you the information there it is going to be in October mid-October um, it is a diamond painting retreat however if you are a stitcher and you just want to go on a retreat you are more than welcome a lot of us will be stitching are, are planning to bring our stitching on this retreat and um, just be aware that the swag that is um, going to be provided is going to be diamond painting related so if that's doesn't bother you some of it you'll be able to use some of it you may be able to give it to a friend or something like that but we do have one spot available um, before our retreat is full again so it'll be a first come first serve basis um, but just let me know if you want that spot but now I can say um, happy stitching you guys until we meet again <laughs> Oh, hot mess. Bye, guys. <laughs>